Hello everyone and welcome back to Amos, our course on Agile methods and open source. In this third and last section of part two, uh, our crash course, I will talk about the team meeting. The team meeting is the once a week meeting where the team actually meets while during the rest of the week it usually they usually work in a distributed fashion. Meeting as a team doesn't necessarily me mean that you have to meet in person. Uh, you can also make it online, but it's a synchronous meeting where you are all there at the same point in time. So let's uh, quickly take a look back at how the Scrum sprint structure looks like, uh, conceptualized. You can see how a sprint uh, starts with a sprint planning meeting where you lay out the work to be done, then have various activities during the course of the sprint, the daily scrums, the actual work streams, until at the end of the sprint, there is the triple review, release and retrospective meeting. So Scrum requires by the book that you meet various times, many times a week um, to work with each other. That does not fly so well at the university, at a university. Hence, we decided to have or require one meeting and only one meeting. You can still meet separately, but we only require one meeting, the team meeting. And this team meeting joins these two red blocks, the review release retrospective that closes of a sprint with the sprint planning meeting of the next sprint. So it's inverted. During this one meeting, um, you first close out, finish the last sprint and then start the new sprint in the middle of the meeting. This way you only need one meeting. So as you can see here, uh, during class day and or team meeting day, um, you will meet, uh, you will prepare that meeting, step one. Then in that meeting, you finish the old sprint by performing sprint review, release and retrospective. And then you finish the sprint. Uh, take a deep breath and start the new sprint right away or after a little pause and go into the sprint planning meeting of that new sprint. So in the middle of the meeting, the new sprint starts. You finish planning, sprint planning, and there may be some after work after the meeting, but once you've finished sprint planning, you are done with the meeting. And this way you only need to meet once for a given sprint, uh, not twice. And this team meeting is a quite important meeting. And in this section, I will talk about its detailed process and I recommend that as you perform these team meetings you actually look at these slides, this particular slide deck and use it as a manual to perform the team meeting well because it's easy to get it wrong. So step one, even before the meeting starts you need to prepare because a poorly prepared meeting is likely to fail. The two things that need to be done. The release manager of the current sprint needs to make sure that for the review session of the team meeting, there will be a working software. So the release manager is busy the day or the night or the hours before the team meeting, making sure that the code builds, tests and runs. Once they have a stable version that does exactly that, they should tag it as a release candidate. In parallel, the product owner, uh, who is not the technical person, but performs or manages the, the planning of new features, needs to make sure that the product backlog uh, contains enough new future work so that you don't run out of features to be done in sprint planning. So the product owner is part of the regular work stream, but specifically in preparation of this meeting, makes sure there are sufficient and high quality uh, feature requests, product backlog entries in the product backlog. 
and then the meeting starts. First up is the sprint review. You want to look at the work you did during the last sprint and sign off on it. In the first step, the release manager shows how the code base is any good. The release manager demonstrates to everyone that the code builds, tests and runs. The release manager does not have to run the review. They just show here is software that compiles and that we can now use for discussion. This discussion, the actual review, is managed by the product owner. The product owner goes through every single feature in the sprint backlog and with the Kanban board those features that are in the awaiting review column. They walk through every feature and ask the developer who developed implemented that feature to demonstrate it. And then the product owner will ask questions, maybe others will ask questions too, with the goal of finding out that whether the feature has been implemented properly. The product owner checks up on their acceptance criteria, are they met? The team looks at the definition of done, is it also met? And then a, re uh, a decision is cast, review decision, which is either this is properly implemented, 100% implemented, and then the feature counts as implemented and goes into the feature archive. If it has not been 100% implemented, it goes back into the product backlog. So only fully implemented, not nearly implemented, only fully implemented features are considered finished and move into the feature archive. Those who, which have not will go back into the product backlog where they will join the new features and will be scheduled in the upcoming sprint planning meeting as well. Here we can see this uh, cycle again. Um, if you fail, if a feature fails in review, it goes back into the product backlog. Same thing for features that have not been finished yet, that were in progress or haven't even started, uh, or you, where you haven't even started working on yet. And so they go back into the product backlog and the product owner prioritizes the features on the fly to have an ordered list uh, with high quality items and highly prioritized items at the top. In general, you can expect that if a feature was worthy of implementation, considered important during the last sprint, it will go right back to the top of the product backlog and you will continue its implementation. But sometimes things change and a feature that you worked on implementing isn't that valuable any longer and uh, is pushed down the product backlog and may only be touched upon later. As you see how a feature uh, was moved into a waiting review and then moved into the feature archive, you can see how it gets a real size. Previously it only had an estimated size and now once it was done it also gets a real size. The estimated size is created before the feature is started, its implementation is started, and the real size is added after it was finished. So the product owner, back to the meeting, the product owner walked through all the features and each feature was discussed and a release decision on the feature was made in the sense of, is it good? Does it go into the feature archive or not? Now a release decision has to be made for the whole sprint, the code base, which intertwines the fully all the old features, the new features that have been fully implemented, but also features that have only been partially implemented. So the decision needs to be made uh, by the, the product owner needs to decide whether the software as it is right now shall be released. Where well, release means it gets a release uh, tag, but also means it gets deployed to a production. This decision is a hard one. Um, usually you will always want to release, but uh, if it's actually deployed to production and doesn't do any good, then maybe not. Uh, so the product owner may have to uh, 
discuss this with the developers who may have a more detailed insight into the uh, actual quality. If there is a positive decision, the release manager tags the release and deploys it to a production. With that, you've done the technical content of finish the technical content of the sprint and turn to process improvement now. The final step of a sprint is to perform a sprint retrospective where the scope is the last sprint and you try to find out whether you can improve your process to get better, faster, cheaper. For this, the, scrum, the old Scrum Master first reports about the work they did during the last sprint, which was to resolve any non-technical issues. And then the new Scrum Master of the next sprint, or perhaps even the same person, makes a roll call as to new impediments. Impediments are problems, issues, uh, always of a social nature, not of a technical nature. So people problems, say unavailability of your industry partner, you really need that input, that information, and they are not answering. That's an impediment. So the roll call means the Scrum Master goes around the table once, asks everyone individually, takes down the impediments, and has this uh, cut out as their work for the upcoming sprint. You don't usually try to solve the impediments in the meeting. A few comments are sometimes okay, but don't start a lengthy discussion as to how to handle an impediment. This is the job of the Scrum Master as their work stream after the team meeting. And then as the last step in the retrospective, you provide the happiness index. The happiness index is this little feedback tool which you will see where everyone tells everyone else anonymously how happy they are with the project and if things apparently go totally out of whack then you can discuss it but in general if things work out reasonably well you'll get a curve like you can see it here left to right are the sprints and the different lines are the different people and then you're done with the old sprint So now it's the new sprint and you need to start sprint planning. The product owner of the new sprint um, reprioritizes the backlog items if there was a need for it, maybe because feature requests had been moved into the back into the product backlog. And then they start working through the product backlog from the top. They take the first most highly prioritized item and ask the developers to estimate the size of it and commit to implementing the feature. So this is done during planning poker, a process I'll explain in a slide or two. And the idea here is that the product owner takes one backlog item after another of the product backlog until the software developers say enough already. That's all we can do in the upcoming sprint. And that's it then for the sprint uh, planning. So in order to understand this process of how the developers decide on whether they can do a feature, uh, how big it is in terms of size, and when it's enough is enough, we need to first look at this idea of size. Scrum, as often adjusted or adapted to software development, uses an artificial size, a measure of complexity, which is not work time. It really is supposed to be the complexity of a feature independent of a particular person. So the same feature implemented by two different people would take a different amount of time because one person is better than the other. Here the idea is that we want a person independent measure of size. So it's not the duration because that varies by person. It is the size or complexity inherent in the feature. To measure that, 
um, we use story points. Story points are really just a unitless point system of values 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. So these are the Fibonacci numbers and they're really categories rather than uh, a linear scale you can do a lot of math with. The idea is that you sort features, you sort the size of features into categories. You give them labels in the sense of points and yes we will do some math uh, to get a basic idea for planning later but it's really categories and the whole point is that you learn over time to put same size features into the same category. It doesn't actually matter to Scrum whether uh, the number or the label you put onto a particular category um, is higher or lower. All that matters is that you consistently start judging the size of same size features as belonging to the same category. In the first few sprints that may not work so well, but over time you will eventually learn to judge similar features as similar in terms of size and complexity. So this is the measure, story points, unitless, and they are used in planning poker. A simple process to get agreement on the size of a particular feature. So this planning poker flow diagram here is the basic process where you where the product owner picks a feature, explains it to developers, they estimate the size and come to an agreement, and then they say this is the feature we're going a feature we're going to implement. And it gets added to the other features in the sprint backlog, which keeps growing until it's so big that uh, the developers say, okay, that's it, what we can do in the upcoming sprint. So how does planning poker, the size estimation, work for one feature? It's a so-called Delphi uh, method of experts, which think by themselves and then have a discussion to learn from each other, and then they think by themselves and so forth. So what happens is that the product owner explains the feature, and then each developer thinks by themselves about um, what size might that be. They, in the physical world, would hold cards close to their chest, and then once they all deliberated and say, now let's go, one, two, three, go, they will all put their cards on the table, play the card, and then you would see which disagreement there is, if any. Disagreement is good because people, competent people, have different opinions. So now you start with the largest number and ask that person, product owner asks that person, why do you think this is so complex? And then they will explain. And then you ask the other outlier, the lowest number, why do you think it's so easy? And then they will explain. And the others listen and the others comment. And everyone who wants to say something will say something. So the idea is that because you put your cards on the table, you will not silently just go with the majority, but have to defend your thoughts. And by saying out loud why you came to your conclusion, and you have to defend it first, you will actually help the others learn, understand your thinking, while at the same time you will also learn from what the others have to say. So then, after sufficient discussion, you take your card back, think again, uh, and deliberate again, and then play your cards again. And maybe this time you already all have the same value, meaning you got agreement, or maybe there's still disagreement, so you go over it one more time, and until uh, you, and you keep playing these rounds until you have agreement. In the very first time, maybe it's three, three rounds, four rounds, perhaps. In general, with a little bit of experience, you will quickly learn to converge because you estimate size, estimate features of same size pretty effectively as of same size, and that's it. So you get two features, three features, four features, five features into the sprint backlog, and then you look at the total sum of story points, and maybe that's enough. 
Um, so maybe in total you can do 25 story points or maybe even 40 story points. The actual number doesn't matter as long as you learn to judge the size consistently and then given a not changing team you will end up with a total amount of story points you can usually always do for a given for a given sprint if everyone only puts in the proper amount of proper time amount of work required by the ECTS and that is when you achieve a stable development velocity or speed so but now you finished in the sense that you feel this is it no more features for the sprint we have enough work planned or ahead of us and that's it the meeting is finished after the meeting um, you can maybe still in the same online session assign tasks to developers if that's what you're doing later after the meeting after you've broken up uh, the product owner has to clean out, clean up the documents perhaps and Scrum Master and everyone else gets going on the main work streams. And that was the team meeting and the preparation and the after work. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for your time and attention. This finishes part two of the Amos project in which I gave you an overview, a crash course on how you're supposed how the process works. Good luck and enjoy it.